Guys, since it's Halloween, uh, I thought we could be a little bit more on the festive side and we could talk about some of the scarier mistakes we see retirees and pre-retirees make with their money when it comes to financial planning. Yeah, I mean, you know, thinking about some of the scary things that I've seen in my career over the last 12, 13 years of, of uh, things that retirees have done um, to derail their financial plans. I mean, the first one that comes to mind is just simply spending too much money. And I think it's something you need to look at now, right? Because people might say, oh yeah, I can, I can afford to spend this money, but what you're spending now is gonna get bigger and bigger every year because of inflation. So you need to make sure that you can keep pace with that, not just now, but five years from now, 10 years from now, Try. you need to start to plan for these things earlier. Yeah, it's almost as if it, it's it's not that people don't do any planning, it's they do the wrong planning, right? They get the back of the envelope out and they calculate what their average return has been and then project that forward. And they completely forget about inflation. Hidden insidious tax bobs, you like to call it. Um, and I think that's the one scary thing that we talk about a lot is not preparing enough for spending at least the same amount in retirement. Everybody thinks, well, I'm going to front load my retirement, I'm going to go on the vacations early on and I'm going to have fun with the grandkids. And then later on, I'm going to do nothing. But I always say like, we have a lot of clients in their eighties, almost 90 that still go on cruises or still living the good life. So you're spending the same as you did before, but on top of that, you have inflation. And I think that's, what's not accounted for. And we talk about healthcare costs as well. Um, a lot and healthcare costs are another big item that we don't really plan for. Yeah, I was actually talking to a client of mine recently, Ren, you were there, um, and they were thinking about going into some kind of continuing care community. And uh, we found out that just to get in, it was going to cost 300,000 plus the monthly fees were close to 5,000 a month. So, you know, when you run that through the projections, fortunately, we plan for it. You know, that can really spend down a portfolio very quickly if you haven't thought about it. Yeah, but a trend I'm seeing, and I think it's more dangerous than the person that's actually doing it. Are people retiring way too early? Um, that's why we're keeping you working, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'm carrying the flag and the banner for the baby boomers. You know, keep going, keep going, don't stop. <laughs> well, people are living so much longer, right? I think that's the thing is when you used to retire at, you know, 55, 60, it was like a standard retirement, but people weren't living as long. So now you're planning for like a 30-year retirement, which is just as long as you were working. I mean, that's why you really need to make sure that you have enough assets in order to last you. Yeah, you do. And I think what's actually scary as well is I, we find that a lot of people that are actually set, let's say you have saved enough, you're retired now, you're retired at the appropriate time. And I think this is one of the bigger issues we're, we're seeing a lot with our client base and talking to potential clients is taking way too much risk. All of a sudden you're in your 60s or your 70s and your portfolio, because the market's gone up so much, is like something like 70% stocks or 80% stocks. And we know in a down market, that ain't pretty. Yeah, especially when you consider that people need to withdraw that money every month. I mean, we've talked about this in the past that you know you don't wanna take money out of your portfolio when it's down 40%. You, know, you need to have that level stable income plan. Chris, I don't think, Microsoft, Nvidia, Apple, and Bitcoin could ever go down that much. Well, you know, right? To use a to use a, a, a term that Dad likes to say, well, what's the next one? <laughs> yeah, but you know, guys, I've been through a couple of cycles, and you know, you went through the real estate cycle uh, twenty years ago, where you know people were paying up for real estate at any price, and the mantra among the realtors, the appraisers, the investors, the speculators, the flippers, whatever you want to call them. Was, you know, real estate never really goes down, you know, goes up in price and then it goes sideways and plateaus and builds a foundation and then it goes to a higher high. Well, I'm, I'm hearing the same arguments now about the stock market. And, you know, I got to tell you, there's a 50, 60 percent decline coming. I don't know when. I don't know where. I don't know why. That's why you diversify, guys. Exactly. If we did, Bob, we know you'd be on your yacht. Um, and, and that's such a great point, right? And I think right now, and I've seen this a lot, just talking to, to different clients, like, you know what, the market's hot right now. Why don't we take some of that safe bond money and why don't we reinvest it back in the stock market while the getting's good? First off, when risk assets are up, that's when you have the most risk. And you know, the one thing I said to this specific client was you don't make all your money in bull markets, you make them by not losing in bear markets. So it's not about getting all the upside right now. And I think that's the wrong strategy. It's like, at some point when the shoe does drop, how well you protect it. And we know you gotta be protected ahead of time. You know, you, you can't anticipate these things. Um, and again, my crystal ball doesn't work either, Bob, unfortunately. Well, right, I don't like you using my question on the podcast. You know, like, uh, why, why, why aren't you taking that money out of my bonds and buying me more uh, tech stocks, right? You know, it's, <laughs> yeah, keep, those quest, keep those questions I ask you, uh, you know, confidential, please. 
But, you know, here's the other thing. Why are people so negative overall, right? That, you know, the consumer sentiment is running at numbers like we usually have in recessions. Um, you know, things aren't awful. There's a reason why the stock market and valuations are at an all-time record high. Well, I think the problem is, we've talked about this a lot, is inflation, obviously, when you look at wages versus inflation, you look at uh, food inflation, you look at energy inflation, they've been higher than what wages have gone up by. And that's like two of the most important, uh, <laughs> you know, needs for the American consumer. And that's why people maybe don't feel great, even though the economy looks good on paper. You know, another mistake I see, guys, that uh, people make in their planning is they give too much away, right? They give too much away before they're in their retirement years. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, setting up trust for your children or giving it to your favorite charity. Uh, these are There's always time for that. But I find uh, that, you know, when it really gets tight, you know, when folks get into their late 70s, early 80s, is suddenly they gave away too much. Right. I don't recall receiving any kind of, uh, you know, gifting or, or early <laughs> inheritance. I don't know. I mean, is that is that really true? What scares me is Bob's not giving away enough. Um, but <laughs> you guys have to talk to Allie. And uh, actually, she's under a um, <laughs> she's under a gag order. So you're not allowed to know. <laughs> no, but that is a really good point is you got to make sure you're covered first. And you're right. Aggressive gifting, um, especially earlier on in retirement, can be a big, big problem. Um, that's why you need to run those numbers every single year. You have to know, like, okay, what did I spend this year? How did my portfolio do? What's inflation look like? And reevaluate, am I spending too much or, or can I afford to gift? And I think we don't run that exercise often enough. Yeah, I have a, a client that's uh, that's it's, it's relatively young, and um, he had asked me recently if he could give 100000 uh to his son to buy a house. And I said, sure. I said, but you, you can only live to 75. <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> yeah, and once you are at RMD age, meaning you have to take money out of your IRAs, you can actually use that for charitable contributions. So if you're giving money to your church regularly or your charities regularly, you can actually save on taxes by taking it out of your IRA. And I have seen people go to the extreme where they say, well, I don't want to pay anything to the government, so I'm going to give as much as possible to charity. And just keep in mind, only a portion of that's going for taxes. So I have some people who actually give up extra, more than they would normally contribute, just to save on a portion of taxes. But you need to make sure you're you're figuring out, what do I need later in life? Yeah, that's a really good point, Courtney. And actually, uh, you know, on, on Bob's topic of giving money away, you know, that includes the IRS too. You know, those years that, uh, you know, you, you, you should maybe start to level out some of those IRAs, maybe take those distributions a little sooner, do some of those Roth conversions can save you an enormous amount of money in taxes. Oh, yeah. You know, there's there's lots of mistakes. I mean, obviously, overspending, gifting too early, um, you know, not investing properly, you know. And I think the biggest problem, I mean, the biggest mistake every single person can make is not recognizing you don't know what you don't know. And that's why you need to hire a firm that has certified financial planners. Without a CFP running your financial plan, I got to say, you're going to leave a ton on the table and you just might not get there.